Magnetic resonance imaging of the breast is an extremely useful tool for the detection and characterization of breast disease, particularly when utilized in conjunction with clinical history, physical examination, as well as the results from other imaging studies. There are a number of clinical indications for breast MRI generally agreed upon by the American College of Radiology, the American College of Surgeons, as well as current medical insurance guidelines. In this lecture, we will provide an overview to these guidelines, grouping the generally accepted indications into eight primary major classifications. The first of our clinical indications for breast MRI imaging would be preoperative planning. Included within this category is evaluation of the extent of a known breast lesion. As illustrated in this case, this patient presented with a palpable abnormality in the axillary tail, which by ultrasound was felt to be approximately 1.5 centimeters in size without evidence of additional disease. MRI has dramatically demonstrated significantly more extensive disease than expected by physical exam or more standard imaging techniques. Also under preoperative planning is a similar category which includes assessment for multifocal or multicentric tumor to assist in surgical planning. This indication does raise some degree of controversy. Studies performed as early as 1985 by Holland evaluating mastectomy specimens, which on the basis of physical exam and mammography were felt to have unifocal disease, demonstrated additional tumor greater than two centimeters remote to the known focus of tumor in 43% of patients and tumor within two centimeters of the known focus in 20% of patients. Therefore, more than 50% of patients at pathology were found to have additional tumor. Evaluation of the MRI detection of additional unsuspected tumor demonstrates positive findings ranging from 13% of cases to 37% of cases. Although MRI can clearly demonstrate unsuspected foci of tumor, Dr. Holland's 1985 study would suggest that this is not necessarily anything new. This will require further long-term studies with standardization and optimization of breast imaging protocols to determine what long-term impact detection of unsuspected disease will ultimately have on patients. At this point, it is somewhat difficult to now have the means to non-invasively detect additional tumor without further addressing it. In this image, the patient had a known focus of tumor. MRI did demonstrate additional satellite lesions in an instance of multifocal tumor. In these next two cases, solitary lesions were noted by standard imaging and clinical evaluation. However, in both cases, more extensive disease was demonstrated with evidence of unsuspected multicentric cancer. MRI can also detect unsuspected disease in the contralateral breast of 4 to 5 percent of breast cancer patients. This patient had a suspected left breast cancer noted by subtle speculation on mammography of the left breast. However, the disease in the right breast, which was actually more extensive, was not suspected. MRI has also been found to be effective in evaluating for deep tumor invasion in patients with posteriorly located tumors or clinical evidence suggesting pectoralis or chest wall invasion. A study by Elizabeth Morris did demonstrate an extremely high sensitivity and specificity for detection of pectoralis invasion. It is important to assess for abnormal enhancement extending into the pectoralis muscle and not just to the surface of the muscle. As shown in these images, MRI can also be effective in determining deeper chest wall invasion as well. Invasive lobular cancer is known to commonly be very difficult to detect by physical exam, mammography, or ultrasound. MRI has been found to be very effective in evaluating the extent of disease in a patient with biopsy-proven lobular cancer. In this patient, the extent of the lobular cancer in the left breast was approximately twice that suspected by standard imaging means. This next patient had completely unsuspected disease of the right breast by both mammography and physical exam. Note should also be made that following initial lumpectomy, pathology was read out as negative with the invasive lobular cancer diagnosed only after insistence on deeper sectioning. Our third clinical indication is for axillary lymphadenopathy with unknown primary. In patients presenting with axillary lymphadenopathy, 
which following standard mammographic screening demonstrating first, no evidence of disease, and second, sufficient density of breast tissue that could mask an underlying tumor, then these patients can significantly benefit from MRI imaging. This patient had undergone a prior right mastectomy and presented for her routine follow-up screening left mammogram. At mammography, abnormally enlarged axillary lymph nodes were detected. However, the breast itself demonstrated only stable, dense parenchyma. MRI imaging, however, demonstrates extensive occult disease within the superior aspect of the left breast. This next patient also presented with left axillary lymphadenopathy by physical exam. Subsequent imaging demonstrated a relatively large area of ductal carcinoma in situ with microscopic areas of invasive carcinoma. These were unsuspected on her mammogram. Studies have also demonstrated superiority of breast MRI in evaluating a patient's response to neoadjuvant chemotherapy. MRI has been shown to be superior to standard imaging or physical exam in determining the extent of residual disease. There are also early studies demonstrating the ability of MRI to detect response to chemotherapy very early in the chemotherapy regimen. In this example, extensive tumor involvement is demonstrated of the left breast in this patient with inflammatory cancer. Follow-up after neoadjuvant chemotherapy demonstrates a significant response to chemotherapy. There was evidence of a small amount of residual tumor proven at subsequent mastectomy. Our next classification is for close or positive surgical margins. If a patient did not have preoperative MRI and is found to have close or positive surgical margins, MRI can be of benefit to evaluate for unsuspected multifocality or multicentricity, which may preclude further reexcision and indicate a need for mastectomy. In patients with only local residual disease, postoperative MRI imaging can be of value to guide the surgeon in subsequent reexcision. It is important to realize that following lumpectomy, there will normally be a rim of enhancing tissue surrounding the cavity. Careful evaluation for more nodular or mass-like enhancement is important to detect true residual disease. In this example of a patient status post right breast lumpectomy, initial margins were positive. MRI did demonstrate somewhat nodular, abnormal enhancement surrounding the biopsy cavity. Subsequent reexcision did confirm local residual tumor. MRI has also been suggested as an indication in the evaluation of the surgically altered breast. This would include evaluation of post-lumpectomy scar versus tumor recurrence. In a patient who has undergone lumpectomy, once the surgical scar has matured, which is generally accepted as greater than six months in age, there should be minimal enhancement noted by MRI. When there is significant high threshold enhancement, particularly when nodular in configuration or demonstrating washout kinetics, this is indicative of tumor recurrence. MRI has a very high negative predictive value in this setting. In this patient who is status post lumpectomy, the initial T1 image demonstrates a surgical scar in the inferior breast. Post contrast T1 fat saturated imaging does demonstrate somewhat nodular enhancement along the anterior to anterior superior aspect of the scar. This patient was approximately 13 months post-op. This degree of nodular enhancement would be suspicious for tumor recurrence. In addition to post-surgical scar evaluation, another area where post-surgical evaluation of the breast may be indicated is in the evaluation of post-operative tissue reconstruction of the breast, whether through a rectus, latissimus dorsi, or gluteal flap. In these scenarios, standard imaging can be severely limited. MRI has commonly been accepted as the gold standard evaluation for breast implant integrity. In these patients where thorough mammographic evaluation of the breasts can be limited, MRI can be of value in the diagnosis of breast cancer as well as in the evaluation of implant integrity. The use of breast MRI as a screening evaluation is currently limited to patients considered at high risk for breast cancer. A 2004 New England Journal of Medicine article demonstrated that MRI was nearly twice as sensitive as mammography in the detection of occult cancers 
in high-risk patients. It is important, however, to carefully apply MRI imaging to truly high-risk patients. You may see instances where patients are referred for breast MRI because their second cousin was diagnosed with breast cancer at age 80. What does determine an elevated risk for breast cancer? First and foremost would be a positive genetic profile with a genetically proven BRCA positive individual. Patients with a first degree relative diagnosed with breast cancer, particularly if premenopausal at the time of diagnosis. Patients also who have a personal history of breast cancer, lobular carcinoma in situ, or atypical ductal hyperplasia would also be at elevated risk. Patients with a personal history of prior chest radiation also demonstrate an elevated risk. So which patients are appropriate to undergo MRI screening evaluation? First, they must truly be high risk as determined by the above criteria. Secondly, the patient should optimally be under the management of a dedicated breast specialist and have a screening mammogram which does demonstrate adequately dense tissue to warrant further evaluation. In this image, we see a mammogram with completely replaced breast tissue. Regardless of the patient's risk profile, MRI would not be indicated as an additional screening tool as it would be very difficult for disease to hide on this mammogram. This is in contrast to this patient who has markedly dense fibroglandular tissue which could easily hide significant disease. Our final category suggests the use of MRI in evaluation of an inconclusive standard evaluation. Given the relatively high sensitivity of MRI, it can be of use in excluding disease in patients whose breast exam is significantly limited, generally by density and commonly by a multinodular texture on physical exam with multiple nodules noted mammographically and sonographically. Application of this indication within breast MRI should be used, however, cautiously. While MRI can be of significant value in clarifying equivocal findings, we believe it is important to first thoroughly work up any abnormality by standard means, whether with spot compression imaging or ultrasound evaluation, as well as correlating with clinical exam. When there are findings strongly suspicious for malignancy by standard imaging, an MRI should not preclude tissue evaluation. We have found this particularly true in instances of suspicious breast calcifications. On occasion, we will perform MRI in this setting, particularly if markedly dense fibroglandular tissue is demonstrated, in an attempt to potentially demonstrate the full extent of suspected ductal carcinoma in situ. We do not, however, allow a negative MRI to preclude evaluation of the abnormal microcalcifications. In this patient, who did demonstrate dense tissue and multiple nodules felt to be benign by physical exam, mammography, and ultrasound, a subsequent MRI did demonstrate completely unsuspected multifocal invasive lobular cancer within the left breast. In conclusion, as we will demonstrate throughout this course, MRI is an extremely valuable tool now available for the diagnosis and management of breast cancer. It should be stressed, however, that with the exception of the high-risk population with moderate to dense fibroglandular tissue, this exam is not indicated as a screening exam. Additionally, in scenarios where there are findings strongly suspicious for malignancy by other standard imaging modalities, although MRI can be of benefit in these instances for evaluation of the extent of disease, a negative MRI at this point should not preclude biopsy. As our MRI imaging protocols continue to advance and we strive for greater standardization of protocols and breast MRI programs, further revisions to these currently accepted indications should be expected.